Hello, hello, and welcome to the finals of the PAX Liquid Show Match Series. You saw Liquid Hey Pro take down Liquid TLO 3-2. to two. You saw Liquid Tyler take down Liquid Jinro 3-1. to one. And it all comes down to a final best of five here, right now. Casted by myself, a.k.a. Day9, and none other than... Dum -da -da -da. Husky! Uh, before I forget, I wanted to say this, and I was all super nervous I was going to forget, but uh, we're actually seeing all three non-mirror matchups, so I'm really oh, happy yeah. about that. That's kind of a nice little diversity, because, uh, you know, diversity is good, and um, yeah, so I'm super excited for that. So non-mirror matchups. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not a single mirror matchup, and now Protoss versus Zerg, so I'm super amped. The first map is going to be Metalopolis, and uh, I'm not quite sure what to expect, because to be honest, this was not the finals I had envisioned, and it's it's always mm -hmm. good to be surprised in StarCraft 2. That's what I love about it. And so we'll see who's going to walk away with the uh, the 500 mucho, mu muchachos or whatever it was you called it earlier. <laughs> 500 U.S. American dollars. That is right. We see Haypro spawning in the right position on Metalopolis. Going to be pretty happy to see that his Protoss opponent, Tyler, is spawning in the Northlands. This means that he will have a lockdown on everything that is going on in his opponent's base. Tyler now planning that gateway with a little tiny hole on one side. Scouting the wrong way. Oh, man. Haypro must have done it remarkable job managing that overlord placement to keep tyler as deceived as possible and you know i especially like that this overlord's just sort of hanging out right here completely still because the instant it does get spotted then he can move in look at the timing hey probe immediately begins to scout right when the probe is at the cross map position that is phenomenal timing by hey pro who has just now taken his expo hatch yeah, that is one thing that kind of sets players apart is, is awkward timings like that. He had it perfectly in the Fog of War. He knows exactly what Tyler can see. And now Tyler's going to get that scouting way late. He is going to see the hatchery timing and, of course, the spawning pool. But, I mean, he is going to see that way, way late. And just kind of a little frustrating. Kind of throws you off your game just a tiny little bit. But very standard opener that Haypro is going here for this map. And we don't see anything unorthodox from Tyler as well. He is getting his Cybernetics Core on the way. And we will see if he gets that second gas early like he did uh, quite a lot in his previous games. Mm -hmm. There's the gas going down for Haypro. We do see an Overlord en route. Not a lot of saving of the larva because he sees exactly what's at the front. It is just one Zealot en route. We see that relatively fast second Assimilator coming up from Tyler. So that is going to be a good sign that there's some sort of three-gate expand coming up. Tyler, one of the biggest advocates of the three-gate pressure expand style. But Tyler, rather than do the Zealot mass sentry expand, tends to do the Zealot slightly later expand with a good amount of stalkers in there as well. So he does like to put on the pressure. Hey Pro now hiding that Overlord up in this north land, and that way he'll get a good spot on the expo. Yeah, he is going to be actually chrono boosting out a sentry. He's not going to try and use a stalker to get a free overlord kill or anything like that. That's rarely going to happen at this level of play. And of course, this Protoss, you always want to make sure to get out that first zealot so there's no crazy zergling run by us, as zerg players are always going to get a default of at least four zerglings against a Protoss player. You can just use them to secure the tower and then use the remaining two to pick off any scouting probe. So really, I don't see anything too crazy, too unorthodox from either of these players. And there, as you mentioned it, Sean, the two gateways just now going down, most likely going to be going for that three gate Band, which is extremely common and mm -hmm. uh, you know kind of standard against Zerg these days. We see Tyler continuing to expend his Chrono Boost on the Cybernetics Core. I'm a little surprised at how long of a period of time it was where Tyler was not making any probes. Actually just hung for a bit while he was building those two gateways. Was checking on it a little bit to see if anything noteworthy happened, but nothing did. So I'm just going to ignore it and get excited about the fact that Haypro's getting a reasonably timed Roach War. And you'll note that it's going to pop out just in time to defend against that four warp gate. So as usual, very nice timing by both players. Haypro beginning to expand with that creep tumor and uh, has two zerglings outside the front there is the continued chrono boost as tyler gets just a little bit more of those ground forces um so it might do one of his trademark three gate pushes once he gets that warp gate done yeah, it's always interesting to me to see Zerg players when they, if they're going to get a third queen or not. It does look like Haypro is not going to do that. However, he is staying on top of the creep spreading. Very important on this map, especially to get creep spreading going, because it's it's extremely difficult to get your units exactly where you need them because there's mm -hmm. two long corridors on these two on these two spawn locations that the Protoss player is going to be strongest. You can see he's warping in units on the low ground just to get them there that much sooner. And really, all Tyler has to be careful of right here is not letting this army get completely destroyed. And he should probably use. Some to kill that one Zergling on the Nexus at some point. But other than that, as long as he keeps his army alive, uses his force fields well, he should be just fine. However, there are several Roaches now. 
Yeah, and Zergling's popping out right now. We see that the Zergling speed upgrade is done. That will allow him to do some good surrounds. Tyler needs to hug walls to make sure he can get good force fields off. And there are a lot of roaches. Whoa, Hey Pro was so prepared for that. Absolutely no threat of that doing any damage. More force fields going down as Tyler tries to find some reasonable way to do a retreat at this point. But now that he's pulled off the creep, he's going to be feeling a lot more comfortable. But man, Hey Pro is going to be able to do a significant counter push. There's another set of stalkers popping out right now. And man, Hey Pro might even be able to win with this counter push. Yeah, this could be very difficult to hold off. I mean, usually you won't see a Zerg player have this much success in the early game, but that attack really did nothing. There are three Stalkers, which are handy against the Roaches, but this is not the unit composition you want against this many Roaches. Now, the reinforcing Zerglings are on the way right now, so it does look like he wants to commit to this. Other reinforcing Roaches may take a while. Tyler is forced to pull off ropes here. This could be very frustrating for him in the long term. But keep in mind, if he does kill off enough of these roaches, this can be an absolutely terrible decision for Hey Pro. All right, a lot of probes have been killed off, but look at the number of stalkers that Tyler has right now. And if you go back to the unit counting station, and look, we see only three roaches up right now for Hey Pro. He's going to have to do a very fast emergency rebuild of a ton of zerglings if he wants to be able to stay alive. Tyler knows this, so he's doing a big counter push. This is always the problem with aggression of slow units. The roaches slow off creep. If it turned out it was a bad idea to attack, there's almost a 0% chance that you'll be able to retreat comfortably. And we see Tyler pushing out and then pulling back because the Stalkers are fast units. He can retreat successfully. Yep, and by putting on that little passive-aggressive pressure, he is going, I guess passive-aggressive not the right term, but uh, he did back <laughs> out as the uh, Zerglings right when they're spawning. So basically, that's not as many drones as Heypro would like right now. Now, Heypro did, thankfully for him, expand down to the bottom center, so he's not getting himself contained or anything like that, and uh, or bottom right side, rather. So at least Tyler was forcing the larva being used on Zerglings rather than drones. We do have Burrow being researched right now just to utilize those roaches, so it looks like Heypro is going to continue to use those, although if this robotics bay starts pumping pumping out some immortals that could be a lot of trouble for him and uh, also have some zerglings grabbing the watchtowers as well as scouting out this high yield expansion and also scouting the other expansion on the left side so he just wants to make sure Tyler doesn't over expand and that the zerg is allowed to take the map to try and catch back up after that roach attack really didn't do all that much yeah and look at this roaches burrow and speed being researched by zerg we see Tyler getting a good mix of gateway units but what's very scary is that zerg has some serious aggression plans for the near future this is a style of play that I love watching Sen do a lot you would do non-stop double pronged aggression with roaches with speed and then you do tons of burrowing antics to try to continue to keep them alive while simultaneously gradually adding on more and more drones and a lot of times protosses who aren't good with their force fields slowly start crumbling but we see tyler doing an interesting play rushing for a robo bay yeah, and he was supply block there for just a second, and uh, he does have the Observer on the way now. It will be done, I think, in time for these burrowed roaches, but the thing about Observers is that they are so slow that if it is out of position, those roaches are going to sneak into places Ooh. they shouldn't be. He actually is slowing down the Observer there with the, uh, with the Overseer right there, so that's going to be annoying, so maybe it won't be in time, although it's only about a third of the way done. So, hey, Pro, I really like his aggression here. A lot of people forget that uh, Overseers can delay a Protoss army quite a great deal. Not only is it going to delay that, but if you use it again, it can start delaying Colossus and things uh -huh, like that, and uh -huh. all of a sudden it starts snowballing. So for now, he's still scouting around, does have good map control, and uh, he's keeping his cool here. Also has his plus one attack for his roaches on the way, so I'm assuming he's going to stick with this for a little while. Yeah, I love this Zergling scouting that Hey Pro's doing, doing complete coverage of the map, adding on a fourth hatch right now. Has a pretty good amount of roaches, could begin doing pressure, but perhaps that burrow play was just done so that way he could have some defensive options. We do see that Colossus coming out right now, that pesky overseer just hanging in the corner, so whenever he does have enough energy for that contaminate, he can just goop up the robo bay or the robo facility. Uh, very, very cool technique, especially when there's exactly one structure that, you know, everything kind of rests on. And at the same time, Zealots and Sentries moving out to sort of clear out those Zerglings in the resource station. We see that Protoss is a little bit behind Zerg, but that's generally okay in any PvZ. Yeah, doing just a little bit of pest control, making sure they don't get too out of control, and he can expand up there when he wants to. The Overseer, once again, going to be scouting in here. The Spire just now finishing for Heypro, and yep, he is going to go out and opt to get out the Corruptors. Of course, you're going to be using the Corruptors primarily on the Colossus, also using the Corruption ability to uh, soften them up a little bit. And so, for now, it, he's not going to do any kind of Mutalisk Harass. It's very common for Zerg to go ahead and get all of the, the Corruptors out that he needs. Just need to make sure you don't get too many, because once they kill the Colossus, they just kind of sit around until you can 
and upgrade them to the uh, mm -hmm. Broodlords. Oh, and there's the Overseer moving in. What structure will end up gooping up? Oh, he managed to get the Robo Facility at 130 of 140. So that is going to delay any Colossus push by a little while. But of course, I wouldn't anticipate that um, Tyler would have been pushing with just two Colossi. But you never know. Looks like he's continuing to Chrono Boost, getting that plus one attack upgrade. And wow, it looks like Tyler actually was intending on pushing with just two Colossi. Yeah, the uh, Thermal Lance is now just going to finish, and he is going to push out this. He does have the Reinforcing Zealots and Sentries coming up from behind, and is he going to be able to do damage here? I mean, again, Protoss most powerful when they're clumped up at your door. However, he's going to have a hard time going against these Burrowed Roaches, and there are several Corruptors on the field now. And it looks like a Zorgan counterattack, but the Pro placement's actually really good. The cannon's not going to be done in time, so there will be several Pro losses here. This is going to be very frustrating for Tyler to deal with. Yep, and it looks like that cannon is going to fall down. The Zealots are now getting warped in. Colossus is about to pop, but in the meantime, there's a huge push going down at the expansion of Hey Pro, and it looks like a lot of Cruppers are moving forward, but look at the number of Roaches that were trapped in front of those force fields. Tyler trying to target fire the Corruptors, but it is not going to be with enough time left. He does manage to pick off all but three, and now it's Roaches versus Stalkers. Pretty even fight. Depends on just the positioning, but it looks like Hey Pro just has a few too many Roaches. No, he's going to end up pulling back, and Tyler's very happy to have been able to pick off those Corruptors, and now as he's retreating back, another Colossus is in the fray, and it looks like Tyler's continuing to push aggressively. Now that battle really came down to positioning because the Corruptors basically were sitting above the Stalkers the entire time instead of using the high ground advantage where not as many Stalkers could shoot them. So Tyler's in a really good spot. The Colossus is able to soften up the majority of these Roaches before finally getting taken out. Is it going to be enough Stalkers though? They are quickly melting away to this innumerable amount of Roaches right now. And there's the good game from Tyler in that battle. 19 Roaches were popping out. Really very impressive play by Heypro with that big counter at the start of the game after that three gate push and just continued to hold that advantage, extend it until he got the win. So as uh, in a little bit of an unexpected result, Heypro is coming out with the lead in this final series of the PAX Liquid Showmatch series. So stick around. We're going into game two ASAP.